Me and Marvin Gardens by Amy Sarah King, Chapter 12, Early Birds and Blue Food. There were early birds. They were getting worms, I guessed. I'd set my alarm for 5.30. I hadn't heard Marvin crying like the night before. There was nothing left in our recycling bin, so I grabbed a handful of plastic bags and an empty yogurt container that was sitting in the sink. I had a whole hour before I had to go back inside and pretend to wake up. I tiptoed to the creek, careful not to be seen by anyone. The place was empty. It was quiet this early, except for the early birds. I saw Marvin through the tree line over in phase three, wandering in the space-like landscape. He put his snout in the air and then turned his head right for me and ran. He made me laugh. Marvin was hilarious when he ran. Goofy. It made me think of Annie and how she'd made me laugh the day before. That's what friends do. They make you laugh, I guess. He splashed through the creek and hopped onto the bank next to me. When he saw me laughing, he smiled. I looked around again in case anyone would see us. It felt like we were on the moon. I scratched his head and gave him a plastic bag in the yogurt container. Sorry, buddy, it's all we got. He crunched on the yogurt container and took the bag from me and sat down next to it. So, where did you come from? I asked. I mean, I can't tell if you evolved or if you're from somewhere else or what. I thought about Marvin maybe being from space. I stopped thinking about that as soon as I started. I'd take Bigfoot over an alien any day. Wherever you came from, I'm glad you came. It was kind of lonely out here until you showed up. He sucked the bag into his mouth and started munching on it. So, what's your deal? Do you only eat plastic or do you eat other stuff? I asked. You have to eat something nutritious, right? Those bags can't be nutritious. Marvin kept noshing on the bag, and I realized that this was going to be a very one-sided friendship when it came to talking. Did you know that development used to have a big oak tree in it? I pointed to phase two, now called Oak Trail. I always wanted to climb it. Mom said she used to climb it when she was little. She said it was probably close to 200 years old when they cut it down. I was too little to climb it then. Marvin looked interested, so I kept talking. That over there used to be Mr. Willard's Orchard. I pointed to phase one, the orchards. We used to go apple picking, and Mom says Mr. Willard used to pay her four bucks an hour when she was a kid to pick up windfalls. A windfall is an apple that falls off the tree in the wind. Mr. Willard used to sell those at half price. Mom used to make applesauce out of them. Marvin seemed unimpressed. This whole place used to be my family's farm, I said. But now we just have this part. We own the woods over there, too. But I'm not allowed to go over there anymore because... I could never finish this sentence. Want to go see some houses? I walked across the bridge while he sloshed back through the creek. I crossed the tree line and arrived in Phase 3. Phase 3 didn't have a name yet. If they asked me, I could give them one. There were plenty of things that were here once and are gone now. Cornfield Haven, Flying Geese Meadows, Buck Run, Coyote Crossing. We stayed out of sight, not too close to the road and not too close to any finished houses. Marvin grunted along next to me and found little snacks along the way. A plastic bottle cap, his favorite it seemed, which made that horrible sound when he chewed it, and a piece of plastic binding from construction materials. He could eat and walk at the same time. He healed by my side, just like a dog. We walked down the new road, and there were two newly built basements, cement blocks and floors, and that's all. On the other side of the road, there were two houses that were half built. The frames were up, the roofs were on, the windows and doors still had those stickers all over them and the front porches were in place, cement covered in mud. I stepped up onto the porch, and Marvin stopped where the ground stopped. I said, come on, it's okay, but he stayed out of the house. I walked through the first floor and saw the plywood subflooring and the insulation between the joists, and if I closed my eyes, I could see the whole house coming together. During phase one, I had thought I might want to be an architect, because when you walk around enough unfinished houses, you get a feel for how they're designed. But then I realized if I did that, I'd be taking away some kid's cornfield. Now, I don't know what I want to be. A scientist, maybe? A veterinarian, maybe? Bernadette always says stuff like, Animals are obes groove. 
Something where I could help nature and be cool and nerdy at the same time. Something Miss G would approve of. Something where I could be creek boy forever. Annie and I talked about being professors sometimes. She said, I want to have the word doctor in front of my name. Dr. Annie Bell. What do you think? I told her she would make a great professor. She said I'd make a good professor too, but I couldn't see myself being called Dr. Obe Devlin. It didn't seem to fit me as much as it fit her. When I came out to the porch again, I found Marvin gnawing on a piece of plumbing tubing. It was blue. I was known to eat everything, anytime, except blue food. This didn't include blueberries because technically they were purple. I said, buddy, you should never trust blue food. As Marvin and I walked back toward the wild patch, I squatted down and picked up a few rocks for Annie. Marvin squatted down to poop. I looked away because it's weird to watch someone, something poop. With my back turned, I heard him making grunty poop noises, and I laughed a little because sometimes I made poop noises and Mom told me I was too big, too old for that. It must be cool to be an animal and not ever have to stop making grunty poop noises. Then a smell wafted its way over to where I was standing. It was disgusting. It was worse than pig slurry times a hundred. Nothing, nothing in the history of the world ever smelled worse than the smell of Marvin's poop. I left him there by himself and walked to the creek. My eyes were watering. I pulled my sweatshirt up over my nose, but even when I was all the way at the creek, I could smell it. It was the kind of stink that would stay in my nostrils for the rest of the day. When Marvin finished his business, he came to the creek. But I was still so overwhelmed by the smell, I just started walking to escape it. We ended up on the suburban sidewalk that linked Phase 2 and Phase 3. A few people were up already. Old people and runners. Runners are always up early. At the end of Old Trail Way, which was the original path to the oak tree, there was a man who had his garage door open. He looked like he was just about to start his lawnmower and cut grass at 6 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. I kept walking to escape the smell. I didn't think I'd ever get rid of it. I wasn't sure what to think of Marvin just then. I liked him. He was still my friend. But I'd have to avoid ever having to deal with his poop again. Talk about nasty. Then, the old guy about to get on his lawnmower looked at, looked at us sideways. And then I remembered Marvin, now loping a yard behind me, and how he wasn't a dog or a cat or a raccoon or a skunk or anything anyone had ever seen before. When I said run, Marvin knew what to do. He ran.